In these problems, we're dealing with calculations about radioactive decay. So, for example, um, plutonium-239 uh, has a half-life of 24,000 years. What that means is that this, all this deadly radiation that the plutonium is giving off, it slowly decays, it slowly goes away. The plutonium actually uh, turns into something else. Um, and after 24,000 years, half of the original plutonium has turned into something else and half of that deadly radiation has gone away. In another 24,000 years, another half will go away and you'd be down to a fourth of the original radiation and so on and so forth. So that is radioactive decay and half-life. There's a formula for this. Um, you would have the amount of the substance that's left equals the amount you started with, often that's called A sub zero, times E to the K T, and T is your time period, and K is a constant that's going to be different for each substance. So that's the constant of radioactive decay. And typically in a problem like this, you're going to want to find that constant and then use it to solve the problem. Let's look at this first one. It says the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,700 years. Now that right there is enough information for us to find this constant, and so we should do that. We don't have the amount that's left. We don't have the amount we started with but we have this idea of half-life. So we could just say, well, what if we started with 100 grams? At the point of its half-life, 50 grams would be left. And we could actually divide here by a sub zero and simplify this equation. So we could put in the ratio of what's left over here and then set it equal to that. And for half-life equations, that ratio is 0.5 because by definition, the half-life means half of it is left. So we've got 0 0.5 equals, K to the, uh, equals e to the k times t, and t here, the half-life, is 5,700 years. So now we've got everything we need here to be able to solve for k. And of course, we've got um, an exponential equation here, so what we're going to do is take the natural log of both sides. So we have the natural log of 0 0.5, and when you take the natural log of e to something, you just get that power, so the natural log and the e kind of cancel out. So our constant is going to be the natural log of 0.5 divided by 5,700. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get something close to 0.00001216 and a few more numbers, but that's close enough for us. Now let's read the rest of this problem. It says, find the age of a sample at which 22% of the radioactive nuclei originally present have decayed. So this is not at the halfway point. What it means is, well, if 22% have decayed, are gone, then 78% are left. So we can set up an equation just like this one, except instead of putting in 0.5 here, we'll put in 0.78 to represent the 78% that are left. And this time, we don't have t. They're asking us to find the age, so that's the number of years that have passed. But we do have k, so this is e to the negative 0.00012216 times t power. And then we'll simply solve this for t, take the natural log of both sides, and so we'll end up dividing here. And when you crunch the numbers on that one, you should get 2,043 years approximately. And I always like to pause and ask myself, does this make sense with the problem? If it takes 5,700 years for half of it to decay, only 22% decays after 2,043 years, that seems to make sense. It seems to be in the ballpark. All right, let's look at another one. This one says the half-life of a radioactive element is 135 days. So in this case, t will be in days, not years, but that's not a problem. But your sample will not be useful to you after 70% of the nuclei originally present have disintegrated. All right, well, let's figure out that constant of radioactive decay first. They're telling us the half-life is 135 days. So we simply set it up like this, plugging in 135 for t, and then we'll solve for k. Take the natural log of both sides. And we find, oops, it's 
divide by 135, and we find that the k here is the natural log of 0.5 divided by 135, and if you crunch the numbers on that, I think you're going to get negative 0 0.005134 or something close to that. That's k. And now it says, we have to read this carefully, it says your sample will not be useful to you after 70% of the radioactive nuclei have disintegrated. So we want to find what point that happens, because that's how long it'll be good until. The question is, how much is left? And when 70% have decayed, that means 30% are still there. So we'll put a point 0.3 here and set up our equation. e to the k, which we now know, times t, and t is in days, and we have to solve that for t, and that's going to be the number of days that our sample is good for. Take the uh, natural log of both sides, divide here, and if you crunch that out on your calculator, uh, the natural log of uh, 0.3 divided by negative 0 0.051344. I think you're going to get something like 234 days and some change. So we'll call it 234 days. So that is a little work with radioactive decay.